So for anyone to rigidly reject everything from the other madhab is to deviate. Is to reject portions of the madhab of Rasulullah sallallahu And consider the ridiculous position which Shafi'is find themselves in. Where, as a number of Shafi'is have told me from Sri Lanka and from, from Kerala and other parts of the Shafi'i uh, world, that when the Shafi'is are going to make Hajj, and Shafi'is believe that if you touch a woman accidentally, your wudu is broken. You have no wudu. So now when you go to make Hajj, you are around the Kaaba. And you accidentally touch a woman because you can't help it. You have no wudu. You can't make tawaf. You have to go to the bathroom. Bathrooms are far away. You go, you come back. It breaks again. You're back and forth. So you can't even complete your tawaf. So hajj becomes hell. So what did some smart Shafi'i scholars tell the people? They said, okay, what you do is, when you're going to make hajj, and you make your knee up for hajj, labbaik Allahumma labbaik, or labbaik Allahumma hajjat. Add to it that you will be a Hanafi. Make the intention to be a Hanafi during your Hajj. Why? Because Hanafi's position, if you accidentally touch a woman, your wudu is not broken. So you make intention as a Hanafi, you go make your Hajj, when you come back, then change your intention, get back to Shafi. Isn't this ludicrous? Yet those who fanatically cling on to the madhab to tell us, no, you must follow a madhab. Some people became so fanatic, there was one author in Turkey. He wrote a book. His name was Hussein Ishik. He wrote a book. I think it's called Heavenly Bliss or some, some name or the other like this. Anyway, in the book, he is reviling all those who don't follow the madhab. He's cursing them left and right. And then to bolster his argument, after telling us that if you don't follow an, uh, uh, you know, a mazhab, then your imam is shaitan. He said, furthermore, Rasulullah said that when you're in your grave and munkar and nakir come to you and they ask you, ma rabbuk, who is your lord? Ma dinuk, what was your religion? Wa man nabiyuk, and who was the Prophet said, who sent you? He will also say, wa ma mazhabuk, and what was your mazhab? That's the extremes. Lying on the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever lies in my name will find his seat in hell. Very serious. I ask Allah to forgive that man and let him know the truth and to correct himself. Because he's on a very dangerous path. But the point is that today, as Muslims, having understood that we must follow the Quran and Sunnah, people ask us, what is your madhab? We're still kind of stuck, we say. Our madhab is that of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is the madhab of the Sahaba, the madhab of the great Imams. I'm trying to follow that same madhab. It doesn't matter if my teacher happens to be Shafi. Because Imam Shafi'i was following the madhab of Rasulullah So we make a distinction between the way of that early generation of scholars and what came to be known as the madhab, which is a rigid confine which the latter day generations are faced with. Make a distinction between the two and we can study wherever knowledge is available to us and no believing that we are trying to follow the madhab of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which is the one way, the one way to paradise, the one out of the seventy-three, the same one which the Sahaba walked on.
which the early generations walked on. This is the one and only correct way. Now, in closing, there is a point mentioned uh, in our times which has become somewhat controversial. We hear the term Salafi and Salafi has come to be in the same category of Wahhabi or Ahli Hadith or your Najat or whatever, Deviants. Well, Salafi is not a Madhab, be sure. There is nobody by the name of Salaf so we can call ourselves Salafis. Salaf means the forefathers and when they use the term Salaf it means as Salaf as Salih that is the righteous forefathers the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, the Tabi'a Tabi'een they are referred to as the Salaf as Salih whoever follows them in Arabic the term for one who follows that way is Salafi it's not as I said another school it is the same school about which we've been talking all along. It's not a new school. It's not named after anybody. It's just a mindset. How do we understand the Quran and Sunnah? We understand it according to the Sahaba and that early generation. If we take that path, if we understand it that way, then the term in Arabic is Salaf and Salafi. That's all. Now if you have a group here which claims we are the Salafis. Now you have to look and see. There is no group called Salafi. But they have a group and they call themselves Salafis. Do they fall into the same Madhab of Rasulullah which we spoke about from the beginning? If they fall in and they agree and we say, fine, you are Salafis. But if we find that they don't, we will find that they don't. Their behavior, how they treat people, how they communicate with them is offensive, it is brash, it is harsh, it is, you know, making claims which they can't substantiate and all this kind of things that we say, no, this is a counterfeit product here. It's not real. It's fake. Yeah, they call themselves. Just like a person say, can call himself a Muslim. But when you look at his life, he doesn't make salah, he doesn't pay zakah, he doesn't fast, he doesn't make hajj, he doesn't believe in qadr. But he says, I'm a Muslim. If you are a Muslim, then these things have to be a part of your characteristics. If you don't have them, then you're not really a Muslim. It's not about what you call yourself, but about what you actually believe and do. So, don't be deluded by the actions of some people who may call themselves such and such, that they are in fact the true product. As I said, you must judge them according to the same scale. Quran, Sunnah as understood by the Sahaba. I hope that is clear. All right. Now, before turning the floor over to you for your questions, there is a question which was brought to me on more than one occasion, which I answered, but people were not satisfied with my, with my answer. They said, Bring us the proof. We want to see the clear proof. So, I said, okay, give me a bit of time to collect it for you. Actually, you're asking about something which is known.